Well, good evening. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live on Easter about at Desawe Kanda. Also live on 23 Ghana on Facebook. This is channel 279. All across the world on 3news.com. Now, we're going to cross over as we go on to also round up the top in 10 grand finale ongoing. But welcome to Ghana Tonight. Coming up, the controller and accountant generals, that's Kosi Queening Bosompim, is in trouble as a member of parliament for the South Dai constituency. Roxy Nelson Dafia Mepo drags him to court seeking to restrain him from contesting the NPP's January 27 primaries. We have the details for you here on Ghana tonight. Also, more burdens on Ghanaians as the Ministry of Finance directs the Ghana Revenue Authority to implement a value-added tax on electricity. 15% will seek answers on the necessity of this and implications on you and I consumers stay with us on Ghana tonight also we get into issues as we find out why the lights of many Ghanaians keep going off and on intermittently over the last two or three days are we back to the era of Dumso Deputy Energy Minister Andrew Ijapamesa we're going to be hearing him here on Ghana tonight. We also have Ben Boati, who is director director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy, is going to be joining us here on Ghana tonight. Let's settle for the Ghana Briefs. The Fair Wages and Salaries Commission has appealed to aggrieved members of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, and the Technical University Teachers Association of Ghana, TUTAG, to come back to the negotiations table. According to the Commission, the workouts by the two unions cannot compel government to grant their demands. When the two parties can no longer sit and face each other, all that we agreed to do is that we agreed to bring in a third party to come and assist. Even if there are challenges dealing with fair wages, we will prefer that the first step should be towards the sector ministry. Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, and the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, GRNMA, have cautioned their controller and accountant general against delisting and suspending salaries of public sector workers from March this year who may not register for the Ghana card. According to the three labor unions, the controller should engage organized labor for a roadmap to get the workers to register for the Ghana card, but delisting their names will lead to labor agitations. If you want people to have registered with the Ghana card so that you can identify them and tax them, say so. It has been collected by the human resource um, within our various institutions and they should, you should know those who have their Ghana cards in your system. Those who don't have it, reach out to them and get them to get the Ghana cards um, as is required. You sit down quietly knowing very well that your staff has traveled outside the country and this thing goes on and much elapsed and the person is not paid his salary who is to be blamed the employer you owed the worker a duty of care the national democratic congress 2020 electioneering campaign promised to regulate and legalize the operations of motorbikes for commercial purposes ukada in the country still stands according to the flag bearer of the party john dramani mahama according to mr mahama the operations of ukada has created more jobs for the youth and should be managed for safer use it's a source of income for several young people so we should make it safer we should make it easy to identify these people who are involved it will really help us separate the uh, riders from those who use motorbikes for crime if we regulate it, we'll be able to identify every motorbike and every rider and know who is the one who has, you know, committed any crime or something. So, I'll look at it. Leader of the new force, Nana Kwame Bediaku, says he will create a middle-income economy with equal opportunities for Ghanaians across all regions if he is voted into office as president. 
in spite of the fact that independent candidates do not garner more than 1% of the votes in Ghana's elections, he is of the view that Ghanaians will buy into his new vision, which he says can turn around the fortunes of the country. I'm not interested in promises, so our manifesto is not promising you anything. I'm not telling you I'll give you free HSS or I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. No, none of that. I'm not promising anybody. I am giving you hope that this is the way that we go together and we build it together. <laughs> Idiot past national chairman of the new patriotic party, Freddie Blay, believes the government should have allowed the convention, a program by the New Africa Foundation, to take place on Sunday. The government cancelled the events at the last hour when guests and members of the public had gathered for the program at the Independence Square in Accra. For me, I think at the right time, if I feel like there are people who have supported or donated to us, I would clearly uh, declare it, you know, I think that's the right way, you know, I, I would say to you right now that the new force, the new Africa Foundation and all of these things that I'm behind, it's, uh, it's my investment that I am putting in there to get to a place so people can see my vision. <laughs> Welcome back. That's what news on 3news.com. Uh, make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, we, we're finding out why the lights of many Ghanaians, not beyond the Great Accra region, we monitor the situation in the eastern and the western region as well. We've got reports from some parts of uh, the western north region. Keep going on and off, at least over the last three to four days. Are we back to this period of experiencing doom so we have a number of people joining us on this conversation uh to to get the the real situation and what the way forward will be and in ensuring a lasting solution to this matter but many Ghanaians are demanding answers to what they describe as the unannounced intermittent power outages which a number of you have been experiencing over the few days gone by and in fact some are asking government to come out with a timetable so we can plan and anticipate when the lights will go off Our social media has been rife with a number of complaints and we've been monitoring this quite closely take a look at some of the concerns that you the viewers we all of us experiencing uh, these partages that has been going on over the period now take a look at this this is what a number of you have been sharing with us on uh, social media this one here says my lights do go off at 8 p.m every evening and comes back in five or ten minutes but yesterday it went off at 6 30 6 37 and came back this morning at 6 5 means you slept in darkness it says i can't say so you say i can say i beg your pardon that dumso is back that's sir uh, power who didn't have power Kwesi says my lights went off at 10 a.m yesterday and came back at 1 a.m that is more than 15 hours Kwesi, thank you the knust cr7 says two days ago uh, they were just playing with the light it will come on 30 seconds later it would go off then three seconds <laughs> Well, later it will, it will come on again, and you, 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 that's your experience um, there. This one from Rhoda says, yes, in Teshi, it came back from, she came back from work around 7 p.m. yesterday, only to come home and meet the whole area in darkness. The lights came back on this morning around 4 to 5 a.m. Rhoda from Teshi. Rhoda, thank you. Um, Turi, Musa. Amer says, yes, I have experienced it last night. It came back this morning. That's doom song. Yeah, I mean, your light's going off and coming back on. So really, what is the what is the problem? What's going on? Andre Japan has been talking to us. It's Deputy Minister for Energy. And first of all, let's establish this. What has been going on over the last few days gone by with the uh, experiences that the uh, people have been sharing with us? But I also slept in darkness two days ago. What's happening? Well, I'm not so sure that uh, there's been intermittent outages in the past few days. Uh, my understanding is that 
two years ago on the night, at about 7 p.m., uh, Rocco um, implemented some uh, threats to, as it were, to kill the uh, um, gas transportation services. Okay, on the west to east river flow line. And so that then led to some deficit in power generation at the time. On the night of night. Uh, subsequently yesterday, uh, two engagements with our friends, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Finance then, the Ministry of Finance to pay off uh, a significant portion of the obligation owed to WACO. And by 8 p.m., WACO had given notification of the restoration of the assets. Uh, how that is translated as intermittent outages over the past three days, uh, I don't know. But there was a one of these events that has been resolved. Well, I, I say the last two, three days because the comments I read from our viewers and my own experience informs that question I asked earlier, that over the last two, three days, this has been the experience of power going off and coming on. That's intermittent in the definition of that particular word. I'm speaking about the experiences of people. I do not have that report, but I'm telling you the Sakya matter related to what it is that happened on the 9th, which was two days ago, with respect to uh, Waku's system. And the fact that it was resolved yesterday evening. And I can say that, excuse me, even that impacted big time. And not the entire 24 hour cycle that electricity runs in country. And peak time is typically between the hours of 7 in the evening to about 11 uh, p.m. at night. So, any other outages outside this time scope that I've given may be attributable to something else other than the one co system for which no. Uh, uh, information has come to my knowledge. I, I see, but Mr. Jabba, people are talking about sleeping in darkness. Mm? So if you say the, the the load shedding as a result of this WAPCO debt ends at 11 p.m., that is not consistent with the experiences of people, including myself. Okay, but then again, I just want to establish this. So have we paid the West Africa Gas Pipeline Company the entire debt owed them? This ten million dollars you talk about that the finance ministry gave some clearance for is it the total amount of money we owe WAPCO or there's more? Yeah. Uh, the correspondent will have said uh, that we owe WAPCO about nineteen million. Uh, GMPC owes WAPCO about nineteen million. We paid three million in December, and the ministry of finance has supported the payment of ten uh, yesterday. Uh, so that brings it to. Uh, which is significant uh, satisfactory to work group as we well restore the services. Uh, in the coming days, we are working to retire the rest of the applications and uh, also put in place measures that will ensure that your monthly invoices are met going forward, just as we've done with the IPPs. To the extent that since August, IPP invoices are paid for in full. And negotiated rates between them and ECG uh, uh, consistently on a month by month basis, so that there's no default. What we are dealing with uh, with the government negotiating team comprising of reps from Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Energy, and other key agencies is to deal with the legacy debt uh, before August. Okay, uh, for which negotiations have been ongoing over the last few months. Uh, some at advanced stages and one or two still outstanding in terms of reaching definitive uh, conclusions on, on the negotiation but that's 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 what it is that uh, the situation is
outages we've been experiencing, uh, power going on and off over the last 72 hours in some cases, is purely financial. Financial problem. We owe WAPCO. So they decided to just cut gas supply to us. That's what caused the problem, isn't it? That, that is not in doubt. But I'm saying that how anybody equates that to bring joins back, it's my imagination. How is that bring joins back? There was an outage. There's no dispute. What accounted for it has indicated to me that there was some commercial issue. But thankfully that has been resolved. And so the outage that we encountered in the night of the night is not repeating itself. Yet you are talking of, uh, uh, what you call it, even tell them the way that Intermittent. Uh, an issue that I'm concerned. And in here it's not back. That's the call that I'm making. Uh, okay, but you see, however you decide to define Dumso, the experiences of the Ghanaian people is that the light goes off, that's doom, and then it comes back on, that's so. So, whether, you know, you agree with it or otherwise, that's the experience of Ghanaian people. The lights keep going on and off. That is the fundamental concern of the Ghanaian people, not really beyond the definition of, of, of what you would want to align with. It's basically about the experiences people have had. Yes, it was, and that has been the case with the president of the that we are seeing that there is a number of financial. Okay, so the fact is that clearly with the Akufuado administration, they would measure to ensure that there is always the light such that even a big outage generates public outcry. Tells you the very good work that has been to get us to where we are. Uh, the four years that you and I slept in darkness have nothing to do with generation. And the facts are there to support that assertion. Okay? It was purely the government's inability to procure fuel to power the existing plants. That led to us sleeping in darkness for four years. That's a matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> over the past seven years, that has not been the story. Uh, where there's been uh, occasional outages that we recall the DCC when we were stringent lines and so major maintenance and the high uh, capacity lines that then required us to take off power, which was communicated over a week and a half or so. Uh, but the uh, 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 protracted outages running into weeks and months has not been seen. Okay. Well, here, here's what we're going to do. Let's bring in uh, Ben Bwachi, who has been standing by also uh, hearing you talk about the problem we've been facing over the last few days. Uh, is the director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. Mr. Bwachi, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, hearing the Deputy Energy Minister talk about this problem, it's a basically financial problem. And this is the experience that the Ghanaian people have had over the period, is it not? The, the doom and so that we've been experiencing over the last few months is purely financial. We owe some provider decides that, you know what, I'm going to take power off. And then it plunges us into darkness. That's the situation, isn't it? Um, thanks, Alfred. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't hear much of uh, what uh, Honorable Minister said. I mean, good evening to him. I think um, the problem of the power sector has remained significantly the same. And that is, um, it has to do with technical, and managerial, and financial. All of those problems are with us. And those problems were identified as backups, as back as, uh, you know, 2014, when the IFC did a study to identify these problems, and they haven't gone away. Um, you talked about, you know, before yesterday's episode, some of the, um, you know, uh, power cuts that we were experiencing in communities and other places. Those are some of the technical manifestations uh, of the problems. And you talked about um, what occasioned the massive uh, load shedding yesterday. 
which you know you know led us to about 500 plus megawatts of power being shared that relates to managerial and financial managerial to the extent that we've not been able to sell power and make money to be able to pay everybody so that has generated the financial problems uh, that we have uh, uh, today for which reason WAPCO had to curtail uh, gas flow from uh, the west so if you ask me those are really the problems and from what i see with the power sector we've been talking about these issues for the past decade and it's worsening over time and we have to pay attention to that it's getting worse regardless of how we treat it or describe it uh, the burden on the state or the Ghanaian people uh, is becoming uh, you know heavier uh, for us to take when you have generation available and you cannot provide fuel for the plants to work it costs us more money because you're not even selling the power to be able to recover revenue but you have to pay because we have to pay obligations uh, with the IPPs so that is the gravity of the situation uh, and I'm surprised that you know one of the least payments really in the power sector is the transmission uh, you know charge for WAPCO right and that is about seven million dollars uh, sometimes even four million depending on how much we we ship through the pipeline uh, uh, you know so seven million dollars a month maximum shouldn't be a problem uh, for us except that we have not really prioritized uh, for the generators once you provide the gas in most cases they will generate uh, right even if you are owing them because if they don't generate because there is gas then you can cause you know not to pay them and so uh, for that period so they often will generate once there is fuel to generate until recently when they started talking about you know some uh, strike and also shutdowns uh, to also recover their debt so we have a bigger debt with the ipps but the transmission charge is the least of it and i don't see why we are not able to prioritize that you know and be able to address even the bigger scale of you know under recoveries and non-payment across the value chain you see you talk about how the situation is getting worse by the day i recall sometime last month when sonana sogli threatened to also cut off their their supply because of the monies they are owed then government mobilized you know some 30 million dollars to pay them and, and uh, reach an agreement with them we do know that there is some cash waterfall mechanism that the government that agreement with the ipps to pay them some 43 million dollars every month but there are some legacy debts as well that these ipps are owed plus the fact that this operational inefficiencies and the inability of the ecg to recover the power that is distributed is this situation sustainable or in the coming months we should just be prepared for more of these power outages yeah i, I think I mean, we have to brace up i don't know what the ipps will be doing but we need to get money if they want to take their money and be threatening shutdowns we should be in a position uh, to pay when i saw they threatened to shut down we could quickly mobilize 60 million dollars to pay them 30 million first tranche and another 30 million if that becomes the language government understands then you are causing problems because then you have more ipps going on strike and hoping to get their money uh, all right so that is a very terrible situation to be in and how we resolve that immediately is what we should all uh, vet our minds to and we have always encouraged government to really look at how we sustainably address the problem of the power sector which government hasn't really paid attention to and that problem is fixing ecg and fixing netco if you don't fix the distribution end of the power sector to make sure that when somebody wants power the person can get power immediately and be able to you know hook onto the grid or if somebody's light goes off you can quickly reconnect the person either by if it is a fault or some uh, localized problem we can quickly address them some of the localized problems that we have they're just usually trips that can be restored immediately to get people to consume power but once power is generated and you're not consuming it somebody has to pay for it we just haven't mastered the managerial capacity and competency to track these basic things sometimes you call ecg you know for weeks and you'll be in darkness just because your meter is gone off and they won't attend to you but the grid is energized somebody has to consume the power 
and pay for it. And nobody cares whether we pay or not. Uh, you know, and ultimately, government has to now get money to be able to pay for it. So the bottom line is just agreeing to fix the problem and stop the wastage. I mean, the cash waterfall mechanism, when it was being institutionalized, for us, our policy position was that it was an unnecessary addition because you're going to create a whole portfolio of officers and people running an enterprise which wouldn't really address the fundamental problems of the energy sector. Because when PRC, you know, issues a tariff, the tariff has different components. It has a generation component. It mm -hmm. has, uh, um, you know, transmission component. It has distribution component. So it's a simple matter of ECG collecting money and distributing it based on the components in the tariff. How does it happen that when ECG has collected the money, they decide to keep, you know, substantial part of that component and then distribute the rest? And also when they don't collect enough, there is no sanctions on them. And therefore, they decide that out of, you know, say a, a million dollars worth of power that you give them, all that they can collect is 300000 And we have begin, we, we have actually accepted that practice. And that is what is happening. So government now has to cough up to 70% of the revenue requirements of the sector. Mm -hmm. And if government is not able to pay the 70%, what it means then is that they you know, stifle or deny the state in entities such as uh, Greco and VRA, who are also part of the value chain. So what is even happening today is that those agencies don't have money. Greco is struggling to run because they don't have money. A lot of the power outages that you are seeing in recent times are system failures because Greco infrastructure is not being attended to as quickly as they should. Replacement is not happening because they are not investing. And if they don't have money to invest, and all we are doing is just firefighting when the bill comes to the table. Then we are, we are running helter skelter to raise money to go pay them. Um, it, it's going to get worse over time. And the public is, you know, taking on these burdens. We had to pay ESLA for all these years. 2021, they said ESLA was not enough. And then they established a delta, another fund. And then put 20 pesos on every liter of petrol, apart from ESLA, to be able to pay for the under recoveries in the power sector and the energy sector we still don't even know where that money is and how that money is utilized all right so every now and then more taxes are being piled on to be able to pay for what they call legacy debt i don't know what the definition of legacy is now because it's really a day-to-day -day accumulation of debt you know that we are seeing uh, in the power sector and the public is paying we are sacrificing development to be able to pay for power that should be business, power that, you know, people should consume and pay, <laughs> you know, people consume, they don't pay, people tap outside, you know, the meters and consume, uh, ECG workers are deeply involved, uh, you know, and it's like we don't have the solution uh, for this. So why are we still holding on to that kind of business? You know, when we have power sold and treated as business all over the world, why is Ghana failing? to deliver this. And we have to cough more than $2 billion every year uh, to be able to keep the light on. And it's now not even sustainable. The grid is giving up on us. And that's what we see in a lot of uh, localized faults. And they don't want us to call it doomso. <laughs> but like you explained, if it goes off and it comes back on, these are key terminologies. You cannot uh, reclassify it or redefine it uh, in any other form. Mm. So let's just get serious, address the core issues eliminate the politics and allow you know the power sector to run as business eliminate the politics and and face the, the reality of the situation we're faced with ben say with me because you talk about the ghanaian people continuously carrying the burden of the situation in this power sector that is leading to all of these partages and then the inefficiencies in there coming up next here on ghana tonight burden more of it on Ghanaians as the finance ministry, in fact, the minister of finance is, and also the GRE uh, directing the implementation of a value added tax on electricity. Now, we want to understand this. So we'll get into it shortly because it's for a certain bracket of the consuming public, 15% of it. Government requested the Ghana Revenue Authority to liaise with the two power distribution companies to transfer value-added tax generated from consumers who
who have exceeded their lifeline power consumption. Now, what you, the statement you're seeing on the screen details all of this. The finance minister, Ken Oforiata, directed the, the, the electricity company of Ghana, ECG, and the Northern Electricity Development Distribution Company, Netco, work with GRE to implement VAT on households that have consumed power above the maximum consumption level specified for block charges for lifeline unit effective january 1 2024 so really ben you talk about burning okay and fixing the problem does that include putting vat on electricity in addition to the consistent increases in tariffs we've, we've, we've seen over the period is that fair no i think at some point there will be the need to introduce uh, tax on the consumption of electricity when we have been able to manage the sector to make it much more optimal and be able to establish that the true cost of producing transmitting and distribution power is x and therefore if you consume that x you have to pay some tax on it to government the way this power sector is run we are struggling to even appreciate what the true cost of energy is in ghana because people are stealing the power and all they do is that they are just the tariff uh, to share the waste on people so we our, our sense is that those who are honest are paying far more uh, you know at this point and therefore if you now instead of fixing the fundamental problem of ensuring that people who are stealing power will stop stealing and reduce the inefficiencies in the commercial sense uh, and also the technical sense you are not going to be successful implementing a vat because technically you're going to introduce another 15 percent adjustment uh, uh, on our electricity bills and that historically if you track how uh, tariff adjustment happened and its implication on revenue generation a lot more people will fall off and become illicit uh, consumers of power so until you have the systems to be able to control uh, all those other factors and risks i mean you're only worsening uh, the situation by increasing tariffs and also introducing these kinds of taxes so i, I think it's, it's really premature given where we are uh, for government to now want to uh, burden the consumer with uh, a vat i see so, so those who are honest are paying more and the probability of this pushing people to find other ways of connecting to power which is a problem we're dealing with the power theft would would increase all things being equal if this vat is implemented that's that's what you foresee happening i mean that's what i've seen because there's no accountability in the system the system is so loose the systems to actually monitor uh, right. power consumed is very weak and you, you say i recall a, 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 a paper that you 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 wrote indicating that if for instance ecg distributes 10 cities of power only three cities is recovered seven cities goes goes to waste correct absolutely i mean this is just that if you try the cash water for mechanism on the revenue requirement how much money we need to be able to pay the value chain which is priced into electricity the gas is priced into it um the generation is priced into it the transmission is priced into it the distribution is priced into it regulation is priced into it if you put all of that together the cost that we actually recover out of those tariff that we pay we are we're supposed to pay it's about 30 percent and at some point it was even far lower than that uh, i mean when we uh, looked at the uh, first half of 2022 uh, we're actually doing around 11 percent We'll see. And you, you describe this as premature, unfair, and, and all of the other impacts that you see happening. Ben, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And uh, we're still going to be engaging on this matter because we understand the modalities for the implementation of this VAT on electricity tariffs is being developed. So we'll, we'll see what is going to be considered going forward. And we understand it's also as a result of the IMF some demands as well this is something that you do know correct that is part of the imf demands and conditionalities this 15 percent vat ben that that is what the finance ministry says i haven't seen that clearly in the imf um document 
what IMF wants to see is a power sector that is able to uh, uh, meet its um, uh, payment requirement. Right. Uh, so if you're not able to do that, you have to show how you do it. So this must be government's own uh, strategy to say that we want to make more money by imposing tax. And once Absolutely. you present that to the end as your strategy, they will stamp it. Indeed. Ben, appreciate you. Thank you. Ben Boache is Executive Director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy, joining us here on Ghana tonight. Coming up next, the Controller and Accountant General, Kwesi Kwenin Bosumpim, is in fresh trouble as Member of Parliament for the South Dai Constituency. Roxy Nelson of Yamako drags him to court, seeking to restrain him from contesting the NPP's January 27 primaries. Stay with us. We're back shortly after this quick break. We have the lawyer for Nelson Roxy of Yamako joining us on Ghana tonight. going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on the right will use the flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, flamingo has the obvious better hiding furthermore flamingo has painted a much larger area you know one bucket of flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability superior hiding superior coverage flamingo paint simply superior this is Kweko, a university student. Every morning, Kweko wakes up and practices how to apply for jobs after he graduates from the university. This is until he found out about how you could win 1 million Ghana cities from the university challenge. 10 universities, 10 diverse topics, and a chance to win 1 million Ghana cities. This life has never been the same. Contact 0532-383-737 for more information. The University Challenge, Entrepreneurship, Leadership, Wealth Creation. First guy to get to the top of Mount Juango wins. Are you ready? Go! You think you're fast enough? You think you're strong enough? You think you're mad enough? Why her? Bro, I don't know how to explain. It's just the way she makes me feel! Ah! You're not here! No limit! I'm not a competition, guys. I'm the price. Drango. No fear, no limits. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to health. Not recommended. Persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Anniversary sale up to 50% off. New year, new savings. Unbeatable prices at Dubai's leading furniture house, Danube Home. most important and popular forms of communication is through a television set and not just any television set but Franco television set. We have smart and LED TVs ranging from the smallest of 32 inches to the biggest of 86 inches. Franco television is easy to operate, it gives you the best picture and has distinctive features like Maracas, USB, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and 4K resolution pictures. Rush now to any of our branches nationwide or on our website at www.francotrading.com. You can call the numbers on the screen for any assistance. Franco Trading Enterprise is still the home of quality television sets.
Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live on Timothy Ghana on Facebook, DSC Victor on 279, all across the world on 3news.com. We're crossing over to the Mevenpick Ambassador Hotel where the top intern grand finale is just about concluding. So we've got to know who the, the winner is and also the subsequent positions as well. Take a look. 600 Ghana cities, am I right? So you have my first 600 Ghana cities. <laughs> And uh, the winner will get extra 2,000 Ghana cities for me to add up. So, we wish them well. You all did very well. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. <laughs> That's very, that's very kind of you. We're very grateful. So our winner would ultimately get 10,000 Ghana cities. So that's 8,000 plus 2,000. Thank you for rounding it up nicely for us. Thank you so much. In fourth position, ladies and gentlemen, winning an amount of 3,000 Ghana cities, an internship with a reputable company, and products from sponsors, In fourth position, a round of applause, please, for Nanayao. Well done, Nanayao. Well done, well done, well done. Well done, Nanayao. Nanayao is receiving a cash, a check from ECL, an internship with a reputable organization, as well as a hamper from our sponsors to say well done and thank you for fighting a very good fight. Congratulations. And that's Nana Yao in fourth position. And now, in third position, winning an amount of 6,000 Ghana CDs, an internship opportunity with a reputable company, and products from our sponsors. A round of applause, please, for Esinu. Congratulations, AC Nu in third position. She's made all of us girls very proud, hasn't she? Yes, she has. Next, I'd like to invite our board chair to present. Is he still here with us? Okay, I, I don't think he's here with us. All right, in second position, in second position. Gentlemen, please step forward. So, our contestant in second position will take home an amount of 8,000 Ghana cities in cash, a trip abroad, kind courtesy at Dancy Travels, an internship opportunity with a reputable company, and products from our sponsors. The winner.
honor tonight top intern 2024 will go home with 8,000 Ghana cities in cash a fully funded scholarship to study abroad for a postgraduate course by the Center for Higher International Education Facilitation Chief a trip abroad by Adansi Travels, an internship opportunity with a reputable company, as well as products from our sponsors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the very first top intern 2024 is with a round of applause give it up for kaiser And of course, that means that Abraham is in second position. A round of applause for Abraham. I would now like to invite our board chair, Mr. Kojoyanka, to present our winner with his check and his other prizes. A round of applause, please, as Mr. Kojoyanka joins us on stage. We'll present the second, Abraham in second positions award first, and then we'll present Kaiser's award to him. <laughs> Abraham gets 8,000 Ghana cities, a trip abroad by a dance travels, an internship with a reputable company, as well as sponsor products. Thank you so much. And the winner. Our top intern 2024 goes home with and I'll, I'll read uh, from the check from chief winner of tv3 top intern scholarship up to 40,000 US dollars <laughs> And that's from the Center for Higher International Education Facilitation. The Center for Higher International Education Facilitation Chief. He also gets a cash prize of 8,000 Ghana CDs from TV3. Congratulations, Kaiser. Kaiser also gets products from ECL. And that's a certificate of participation from TV3, top intern. He gets a medal, a winner's medal. Congratulations. And he also gets... He also gets a cash donation.
donation from our incoming presidential, well, our presidential aspirant for the APC Hassan Ayarega making 10,000 Ghana cities in all. Congratulations, Kaiser. Congratulations, Abraham. Yes, you may go backstage. Congratulations. Right, more prizes now from ECL from ECL I have seen the contents of that bag and you'll be very happy when you open it congratulations to you Kaiser a very special thank you to our judges thank you so much judges for the care and work that you put into our contestants from start till now and especially tonight because i know that it was not yeah. easy deciding right on so right from the mevin big ambassador hotel that's what's been happening with the top in 10 grand finale there's been 10 weeks of a lot of innovation and education the maiden edition of top in 10 organized by apl here at media general and thank you to all the sponsors and congratulations to kaiser and then also to abraham esinu nanayao congratulations to them want to say thank you thank you so much for staying with us here on ghana tonight and we sincerely apologize for not being able to treat the topic as advertised with nelson Rexon and dafia mcboss court case or the shoot against the uh controller and accountant general seeking that the court restrains him from going ahead with the parliamentary primaries of the npp so we'll get into that tomorrow all things being equal but thank you so much for joining us here on ghana tonight on behalf of the rest of the team i do appreciate your company as always i am alfred Kansi. have a good night ghana tonight is brought to you by flamingo paint superior durability superior hiding superior coverage simply superior